welcome. Hello. Uh, we are not the usual shower caps that you would see on this show. They are taking a break for the holidays here. Uh, I'm Mr. Dean. I'm the producer of the Shower Cap Kids, and I have been since 2010, which makes me feel insanely old, even though I know it's probably not that old, right? It's youthful and amazing looking. Um, what I decided to do here for this show uh, and why I'm on is I decided to contact basically 10 years of shower cap to sort of do a big alumni reunion show 2020 here so i contacted all the directors that i can still find and haven't fallen off the face of the planet and i went all the way back to 2010 and progressed my way through it until last year's uh captains and i asked them if they want to join me for a quick zoom call and a episode of rinse and repeat so we are coming to you live from a Home Depot shower display case at your local Home Depot. Uh, and we are bringing you this episode here of Rinse and Repeat. So it is my great pleasure to introduce these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I dig it. I got 10 of 10 years. Uh, these 10 amazing, talented individuals who I could not be happier to see. And we've started recording the episode, but we've been spending the last, I don't know, like 30, 40 minutes just talking because it's been so good to see each other. So uh, that's me. I'm Dean. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give everybody here a chance to introduce who they are going in order from the very first director I had. Some of them directed together at different points in their timelines, but uh, I've got different ones here. And I'm going to ask them what their favorite shower cap nickname was. So if you don't know who the Shower Cap Kids, if you watch any of our old episodes, you might notice that they don't use their real names. Every year, Shower Cap Kids are given their own nicknames, uh, usually an inside joke on the team and something that they get on a shirt that they wear. Um, I did not wear one of mine. I do actually have shirts for some of our older Shower Caps. Yes, I've been given nicknames in recent years. Um, but you can see a few of the shirts here have shown up, so we'll let them talk about that. But I think my favorite nickname... <clears throat> oh... I think it might have to be Legs. I was given the nickname of Legs. Yeah, Michael Callahan giving yes. a little victory punch there. <laughs> I was given the nickname of Legs, and I had to wear a shirt to the show that said Legs with my colleagues walking by going, why do you have a shirt that says Legs? And the way I got it's that name perfect. was every time somebody would say a relatively good sketch idea, I would go, yeah, yeah, okay, I like that. That has Legs. Let's see where it goes. Okay. And I said this so much that they nicknamed me Legs. So that is me. That was given to me uh, two years ago. So going around from the 2010 team, my first team. Now, Casey Ross and Kenny Mushes were on it together, but I'm going to go to Kennedy Musich first. And Kennedy, uh, 2010, go. Who are you? What was your SEK name? How did you get it? Tell us a little bit about yourself. So um, in terms of name in 2010, I couldn't tell you exactly. Casey had to check her Facebook today to find our names, but you my could favorite... not remember <laughs> anything. <laughs> my favorite name was probably Llama um, because I was a pouty little girl back then. And there's a scene in Emperor's New Groove where the llama is getting rained on. And I am his doppelganger, at least back then. Also still now look just like that llama. So you that's do. probably my favorite name because I was just so salty and I look just like this llama. So that's that's probably my favorite name. That's amazing. <laughs> I did not know that's where that I think came we from. gave you I think we gave you many nicknames back then, but we'll stick to that one. <laughs> I guess my third question of where are you now? Uh, she is one of the assistants. Right back where I started. Now. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Casey Ross, 2010 and 11. I have you here representing the 11 team. Tell us uh, yeah. see who you are, where are you now? What was your favorite shower cap name? Who you are? Well, Casey Ross, representing from my first year, I went by stud because that year, Casey could not take any character other than some cool bro. I don't know why, like no other character would form other than like, yo, what's up, bro? Like, hey, how's, you know, that was just how my anxiety manifested, I guess. <laughs> and it played off well in an improv group. <laughs> and I got a shirt for it. That's awesome. We, we lived together for three years in college and she did not lose that persona. Oh, no, I am I definitely you know. like a bro reincarnated in this woman's body. <laughs> 
where uh so where are you now so yeah that's the other thing is i have to remember where all of you are some are in school some just finished school some are wandering the streets philosophizing i don't know what are you up to <laughs> Yeah, now um, I just, I worked at Lewis for a while after I graduated at Lewis University. And then I actually went to school there and got my master's and then haven't done much with that. But, <laughs> but no, I'm living uh, in LaGrange Park and just working for a fertility clinic, doing marketing things and trying to figure out my life, you know? Brandon Vlack, I got you representing, weirdly, I, I jumped to have you represent your freshman year, no, 2012, so you you would have been uh, your first time directing, so take us through it, man, how are you doing, what's up, uh, favorite shower cap name, how'd you get it, and uh, what are you up to these days? All right, so... Hello to those uh, podcast listeners out there. I thought I'd hit you with the radio voice. This is Brandon Black. Uh, happy to be here. Um, now that I got that out of the way, what's up? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> all right. I'm glad that in I don't even know how long, man, ten years. You're still that you're still that goofy kid that we're like. Let's take that kid. He had a lot of energy. He seemed funny. He never dies. I still got it in me. Actually, to that point, uh, at Meyer, where I happened to work for six years, I would do the announcements and I'd, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Like, it was great. Um, yeah, so uh, now thank you for shopping at your friendly Homer Glenn Meyer. Oh my so, God, I think I've mocked you. I think that, I've was been... me. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. I think I've been yeah. like, I think I've been in Meyer like, oh, you're me. Yeah. Uh, yep, yeah. <laughs> That's so, so uh, funny. Yeah, so worked there for six years, but uh, we'll get to that in a moment. My favorite shower cap name would have to be um, Highlighter, which was my freshman year. Um, I'm not sure. Well, Casey and Kennedy probably recall that. Uh, the reason I got that name, well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching on YouTube, is this right here. Oh, my God. You still yes. have the pants? Wow. <laughs> oh, of course. That's still right. For for the our not pants. for our not YouTube uh, watchers, for our podcast listeners, uh, Brandon just held up a very old, very bright neon pair of pants. But I and, like uh, uh, yeah. close to MC Hammer pants. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and um, just a little bit about me now. Uh, speaking of Lewis, I just graduated with my bachelor's in English and secondary education. So that's what's going on in my life. And um, yeah, I worked at Meyer for six years. And I've actually been doing improv for the past three years uh, yeah. with a team in Orland Park. So still at it. Some things have never changed. Speaking of <laughs> people that have never changed and still make me laugh almost every time I get a chance to catch up with him, I'm throwing it now to Mitch McLaughlin of our 13 year. Um, yeah, what's up, Mitch? How you doing? What was your favorite shower cap name? Where are you at? Take us through it. PG thirteen. Thank you. I feel, bad. I feel bad because I don't remember all of my shower cap names. To be honest, I don't know why those just left the reservoir. Uh, I'm working on it, but one I remember is not even like the full name, and it was something to do with spaghetti because we were super into this skit from Tim and Eric where it was. <laughs> Spaghetti. Yeah. Like, spaghetti. Okay. Yeah. And we like, I just, I just thought that was so funny and just said it all the time. And so I think one of my names was like spaghetti. I have one. I have one. Picture evidence because I would remember nothing without Facebook. You were XL Chalupa? That's right. Because I love <laughs> Taco Bell. Oh, there it is. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Thank yeah. You. Um, so right now I am living in Nashville. I just graduated college about a year ago, um, which was awesome. College was really cool and I got to, yeah, I had a lot of fun. I got to work in like all these studios and stuff. And like, I really, I don't know. I just got something I never thought I would have been able to experience. So that was sick. Um, but I mean, I'm selling coffee <laughs> and like working in coffee shops right now. Um, and door dashing, door dashing is awesome. So Shout out to the sponsors uh, at DoorDash. 
uh, for SC Bay. <laughs> we really appreciate you out there. All that, improvers could probably. I love it. Ryan O'Callaghan, yeah. I've got you representing our 14 team, um, which I think was also the first time you directed with the lovely gentleman who just went uh, to uh, our viewing here to the left there. Uh, what is going on, man? How are you? Favorite shower cap name? Yeah, How'd you uh, get it? What are you doing? Sure. Well, before I do that, I, I still remember with Mitch, um, even before the name, I remember that year, our humor, I think that's when it just started to... <laughs> I remember on stage doing World's Worst, and I think it was World's Worst Spoon, and you just walked forward and went, it's a fork. <laughs> that was... That was like where we were at with humor. It wasn't thinking of anything clever anymore. It was just, no, we're just going to deny you. But also admit, though, that not oh, only no, is, it, really. is it eight years later, but World's Worst Spoon and walking forward and saying, it's a fork, is funny. Like, Excellent. Yeah. It still kills. Someone else went forward and said it's like a, it's a pail or a shovel. It just, that's it where did, we were. Yeah, um, it led to a domino effect of just saying dumb crap. Yeah. It's hilarious 3 a.m. humor. Yes. Yep. Um, uh, but anyway, I, I was actually, I was thinking through all my names. The one, I remembered all of them except for my sophomore year one because it started as one that was not allowed, that was printed. <laughs> and then I can't remember what we went to instead. Um, and I, I still never that got shirt. that shirt from you, Mitch, but that's all right. It. I'm sorry. So here, no. here's... Here's what we'll do is you are welcome because there's others on this call who don't know what the nickname is. I remember what the nickname is. Yeah. I now use it. <laughs> I now use it as an example for for directors. Megan and Michael and a few others have probably heard this name as a this is what you can't do. I, apparently I said this a lot. So my first shirt that I received printed was which we didn't know what it was a um oh I, know, God, I guess I remember. Or um uh, I'm not gonna go into that, but so we, were, we weren't allowed, so we had to switch routes on that. But my actual favorite name, I think, would have been the next year, which was Poseidon, which for those who knew me back in high school, I sweat a lot. Like, I just... <laughs> oh, that's right. We, I moved through so many different types of deodorants, all clinical stuff, went to the doctor, tried to figure this thing out. Um, I was never diagnosed with hyperhidrosis or anything, but I, I God, I had to have had it because... I mean, the pit stains would be down to my torso. So I was Poseidon um, for the god of water, of course. And um, yeah, now I am. So I graduated in the spring. Uh, my majors were PLS and FTT. So I graduated in acronyms. But it was essentially <laughs> reading books and watching movies was what I graduated in. So now I, uh, I'm nannying a 17-month-year-old girl. And I'm, uh, I'm giving her a nice classical education. <laughs> there it is. That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, moving along, along then to Mr. Matt Gray. Uh, let's see. I've got you on our 2015 team. Uh, shower cap name. How'd you get it? What are you doing? Tell us, good sir. Um. So my favorite shower cap name is actually probably the one from that year because uh, it was gingivitis. <laughs> so uh, my hair isn't as red anymore but it used to be a lot more red and since i'm a ginger it was gingivitis and i really liked explaining that to my grandma after the show she's like why is there an oral disease <laughs> <laughs> there oh my is. god yeah. <laughs> but um i really like having to explain having an oral disease on my shirt that was a good one and i also like freshman year my name was hades but uh, when I opened up my shirt, I just opened it up and yelled Hades because apparently I can't read. <laughs> and they were like, no, it's Hades. I was like, I thought this was Hades my whole life. So that is probably my other favorite just because I, I botched that one so badly. <laughs> That's awesome. um, as for what I'm up to right now, to carry on the Lewis University train, I dropped out of Lewis University. Uh, because uh, I was started doing some comedy up at Second City, but pandemic kind of put a halt on that. So right now I'm just working at Trader Joe's and uh, enjoying life at home. I hear I hear living DoorDash, it up in Homer Glen. Yeah, I hear DoorDash is very lucrative for us uh, for us uh, out of work artists. So you know, Yo, real quick. So on Christmas I DoorDashed 
and the peak pay was insane in the Chicago or the Homer Glen suburbs. So just put it out there. You're in a good area. I feel like I think point, I might have to change careers. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> I think Come calling on. DoorDash driver. DoorDash <laughs> <laughs> Moving down the line, I've got Dana Vlack from the 2017 team. Uh, one of the first of the family members to come along. Now, Ryan had an older sister, Erin, who was on the team with Casey and Kennedy. So, Shower Cap is a family business, apparently. Dana, what's up? How you doing? Shower Cap name? What are you up to? Fill us in. Oh, you know, mediocre. <laughs> but that's fine. Um... I have to maintain my deadpan persona, Dean, my SCK names, which I'm actually, as much as I appreciated all of them, um, I think we could have been a bit more creative as we are an improv group. I had one-liners. I was a pun person. It was more, I think when I was a freshman, it was like an easy cop-out, like funny joke, because my brain just made that connection immediately. Um, they were all variations of the word pun, <laughs> if I remember correctly. Um, so they kind of gave up halfway, yeah. <laughs> but I still appreciated it, and I guess I think we, did I did I ever have Punisher, or did we decide that that was not good? Dana, we we talked to Dean about it, and he was like, "No, that's either seen as too, uh, you know, <laughs> that." So we went with you. You know what your senior year one was, right? Because well, I picked, <laughs> and I. Picked, <laughs> Because it's P U N, and I was like, I'm alternative. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I got the black shirt, and I was just living my dream, just as like an emo senior who never got out of my deadpan phase. And Casey was saying earlier about how she would always do bro persona. I would immediately go to like deadpan persona. Yeah. Well, yeah. Right now, um, I graduated from JJC. Um, I got my associate's degree. Yes, saving money, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> And I was going to transfer to UIC. I was uh, accepted. All I had to do was pick my classes and then COVID happened. And because I have worked at Chili's for five years, my source of income <laughs> dwindled. So uh, I've just kind of, I took this year off right now. Um, I was doing improv at a hipster cafe um, in Willow Springs, but um, it wasn't really, my scene, so to speak, just because I, I wanted um, people to be less under the influence of substances. They were all legal, good adults. Um, I just didn't want to do that. So I haven't done improv for a hot second, but that's all right, because I'll get back on the wagon. And um, yeah, I'm just kind of hanging out, playing Stardew Valley, screaming, you know. Your co-director, Patrick Dilger, uh, from the same year here, 17, what is going on, man? Favorite shower cap name? What are you up to? How did you get it? All that good stuff. Sure. Uh, what's up, guys? Uh, I would have to say my favorite shower cap name is Bleep. It was very rightfully earned because freshman year, 14-year-old kid, knowing very limited comedy and improv experience and watching TV is like, oh, the easiest way to get people to laugh is to swear uncontrollably. <laughs> and then I remember one day, Mitch McLaughlin, who we spoke earlier, and Ryan O'Callaghan brought me upstairs from the freshman center to see Dean. And they sat me down and I almost like crapped my pants with the discussion. Cause again, 14 year old kid having a very serious conversation like that, very spooky. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it was. I literally look back on it now. I laugh at it because of how, like, immature I was, and how, like, Dean was like, "This kid is insane." But like, I need to tell him if you want to be in this, you gotta straighten out. So <laughs> and I laugh at it. But it was so funny at the same time because you because it's like there needs to be one person who swears on behalf of everyone in the group. Absolutely. You know. <laughs> And so you would hit the swear, and then it was like, <laughs> and you just deadpan at us, and we're like, bro, you know? <laughs> I remember when we were doing, sorry, I just want to say this one thing. We were doing a quick, like, improv game in between, like, before the, the show, before the 1X show, 
And I remember we were like, wow, Dilger, you've been doing so well. Like mm -hmm. everyone was like, look at you. And then like we did like, I don't know, judge or something. And he, he said something and we were like, you need to not have that in your head right now. Cause we're going to go on stage and yeah. stuff right out there. <laughs> Um, oh my god <laughs> i definitely remember this year and i definitely remember sitting up there in my hands in a in a folded prayer position going oh please just this kid has 20 minutes on stage let him get through 20 minutes without dropping a cuss word and he did it two two nights two shows didn't swear but i love this dynamic of these 10 years because you have mitch mclaughlin who was a freshman with kennedy and casey and I think I pulled him aside at one point and was like, you got to straighten up, man. You can't, you can't be acting like this. You know, if you're ever going to hope to maybe even run this team one day and then fast forward four years, he's in charge of it. Coming to me going, I got a freshman that I just, I don't know what to do, Dean. And I was like, oh, look what's happened in a short four years. And then fast forward again, I've got Dilger as a director coming from the wily freshman going like, I just got some of these freshmen. I just don't know what to do. And I'm like, <laughs> amazing how these things are cycles and they repeat. Um, what are, well, we know how you got your name. We know what year you're doing it. What are you up to these days? You, I think you just graduated or are you still in school? You're still in school. No, I'm still in school. I'm on my third year of a five year program for architecture. So got two more years of schooling. So that's going to be a blast. Hopefully things are, smoothed out by then uh but yeah online classes in the city so that's nice and then working part-time at the local home depot uh store 1989 <laughs> so that's a blast a lot of like experience of getting yelled at by people it's pretty nice about things i can't control <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. Well, don't worry. I, uh... in, in two years, when you're graduated and McLaughlin's running his DoorDash fleet, you can sign on for him, and, and he'll have a spot for you. Yeah, dude, keep paying Homer Glenn. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't done any improv because I'm at IIT, very nerdy school, so not many people know how to act or have social be skills. that funny. So. so. Yeah, just emote in general, because it's a lot of just sitting in your room. So I have been wanting to do improv, but just have not had any like motivation to get out there yet. But I plan on, I hope to get back out into it. That's a good kick over to Megan Staley, uh, 2018. Uh, what was your favorite name? How'd you get it? And what are you doing? So my favorite name actually was my senior year. Um, so it was 100% given to me by myself. Um, it was Megalodon, and that originated because I was supposed to be working on an outline of a sketch that we were going to make seem like Coachella, but it was for salad. And salad instead fest. of working on that, yes, yeah, salad. salad fest. Fest. I said that to Dean as an idea, like when we were practicing for, I think, Humanities Week, and he was like, why? Why did? Because I immediately said it. He was like, what? Why? No, no. No, it was worse than that. You didn't stop saying it. You said it once. And I was like, let's, give, let's give a practice location. You were like, salad fest. I was like, ha -ha, no, we need something better there. Give me a different one. And then every other time I was like, okay, give me a suggestion. Salad fest. I was like, you, you need to stop. Because we're not doing salad fest. And then, yes, fast forward like four years, Megan's trying to write a salad fest sketch. Yeah, that one didn't have legs. Um, yeah. <laughs> so instead of working on that sketch, I drew a giant shark on the whiteboard. And one of the current directors, Aiden, um, started calling me Megalodon because of it. So that's a good one. Yes, I, I knew I knew what you were going to say before you even said it. Uh, <laughs> and what are you up to now, Megalodon? Um, I'm currently at Notre Dame as an environmental engineering major. And I'm still hayakin' it up on stage with the humor artists and an improv troupe there. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Very nice. And when you graduate in a few years, DoorDash will have an available spot for you under Michigan Club. Um, all good. right. We'll throw it one more over then to last year's director and returner, Michael O'Callaghan. So I'm Michael O'Callaghan, as was said. Um, <laughs> my favorite name would be my junior year, I was 
um, three three dollars and twenty four cents through twenty four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> which um yes was my I, I am a big fan of mcdonald's i get it about five times a week five times a week i just got it before this um and my order is usually two plain mcchickens and a large coke which is each on the those are all on the dollar menu so it comes out to three dollars and 24 cents with tax um Nowadays, I am a freshman at Notre Dame, um, majoring in PLS and FCT. So uh, the same as my brother, books and movies. Uh, so not sure what I'm going to do with that, but <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> DoorDash, DoorDash. What does it stand for? PLS is Program of Liberal Studies, which is like great books. Oh. Yeah, and then FTT is film, television, and theater. That's cool. But like you choose one of those three. So film. Yeah. Um, and I'm on the humor artist improv team at Notre Dame with Megan that Ryan Hello. was on. <laughs> I enjoyed because I will not forget another fun memory of this sort of this group. <clears throat> um, Megan was part of sort of a 2000. Uh, 18 2018 revival of sorts of shower cap we brought back a sketch show and and olivia adams and megan uh was leading that show and ryan happened to be in town and i and i i think through mike said oh can i come visit and i said yes because i know you're still active in comedy and i need some fresh eyes on this show they're doing and uh, i would love for you to come give me your opinion so ryan came to the school that day he saw a real rough cut uh made some really good suggestions a lot of stuff we ended up putting in the show and we had just debuted nicknames. So we were practicing. I was having to say, hey, use your nicknames. Use your nicknames. Try not to use your real names. And I remember saying, Ryan, <clears throat> oh, look, did you see Michael's nickname? It's 324. Do you know the story? And Ryan, making the same face that for our YouTube viewers can rewind and see, was rubbing his head going, yeah, no, I know why he's 324. Because that's two McChickens and a Coke with tax. <laughs> and, and then I think you turned your back to the group and said, I'm worried about the kid. That's that's like all he gets. <laughs> Like, like, I'm telling you, man, like, Dean, you might, you might have to say something to him because he, he's unhealthy. I don't know. And I'm just like, I thought it was a very funny nickname, but then Ryan's like, we might need to stage an intervention because I think he eats this. I was like, I was like, this sounds like an O'Callaghan family problem that maybe you can take care of. Yeah, it, was a, it was a deep, for that, for us to see that on stage, you don't know, that tore us apart. I'm glad it's funny for you guys. <laughs> That was that was um, shame, shame in your mother's eyes and, and realizing that it wasn't a dark secret anymore. Michael, <laughs> stop breaking your mother's heart. Let's just let's just go with that and <laughs> and remember that you well, still. I I mean I still. Remember. I was just gonna say senior year. I feel like Matt, we were down a sketch maybe like two or three nights before the show. We were looking for something and they're like, you could just go on stage and tell them that like big scratch and dent on your car was you that oh, yeah. I told them about like that's funny to do that live. I was going to say, you know what? This is, this is a good yeah. segue here. So I've yeah. done my alumni, I've done my intros in 2013. And it's a sketch we have revived uh, as part of the podcast. So in 2013, Mitch and Brandon were directing a show, uh, which we later called trapped outside the box. We took that show to theater fest and got to perform it. Megan Staley and Olivia Adams were part of the revival they uh, brought the show back, and it's a one-hour sketch show that we write a completely original show. We use projector screens. We do a cool thing. If you've never seen it, definitely come see it when COVID's not happening. Um, Megan's year was called uh, In the Ashes of a Texas Roadhouse. Michael <laughs> O'Callaghan, Aiden Callahan, one of the current directors, brought it back again last year for Into the Showerverse, and we've done these great things. But one thing that started with Brandon and Mitch and I think it was the same story, Ryan. We were short. We're like, we need sketches. And I don't know how it came about, but we were sitting around just telling embarrassing stories or something. And I'm like, we should just tell these in the show. I think Ryan told one about leaving a wet spot behind uh, on a desk from swimming. Uh, I forget who all did them that year. And Weston gave his of uh, <laughs> getting a physical. He's. I think the, the punchline was like, I turned my head to cough and stared directly into my mother's eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Your mother went like. So the whole point of it is, I think this is, we kept that story. Uh, Brandon 
And Mitch, we called it True Tales from SCK. And Mitch, you suggested a song to use for that sketch, which I still can't tell you what the name of it is. Um, I could find it, though, because we still use it. We use it every year. It's the same song. It's the one thing we've kept from the 2013 show. It's sad. Think, it's very sad. I, I will dig up my Spotify while we're playing. Tallest around. Man on Earth. Yes. Tallest Man on Earth. Yes, that's it. Um, we, <laughs> we, use the, we use the piano sad exit for that. Yeah. And we still do it. We brought it back with Megan's group. We, we kept it with Michael's. And when we made the podcast, we decided to keep it. So I decided, since I didn't want to do a whole ton of segments with you guys and introducing you was a segment all of its own, uh, that I would just throw it over now to True Tales from SCK. This, I mean, it, it wasn't cool then, but in high school, we did a lot of uh, rock band parties. Mm -hmm. um, where we would like sometimes like dress up and stuff. It was very... We, uh, we would go and like we would post on Instagram as if we were in a real band and we named all of our bands after things that we learned in AP US history. So our one was Manifest <laughs> Destiny. There was Manifest Destiny. There was Knights of Labor. Um, <laughs> it was the most metal oh, thing. The gold, standard. <laughs> the gold standard was one of them. It was good. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, um, we were doing that and I was leaving on a, a wintry night uh, and I decided to put my Guitar Hero guitar, they were compatible, um, in the passenger seat and I like buckled it in. I was like, this is, you know, my baby. And I pulled out of the driveway, turned on the radio and like Bohemian Rhapsody was just starting up on the radio. I was like, Game it over. is the perfect drive. Like I am so excited for this night. And, <laughs> So I kind of, you know, gunned it a little bit out of my driveway and it, the street curves and um, the Guitar Hero guitar fell and struck my right arm. And I swerved and like looked to catch it. And then I looked I like forward and the mailbox was flying up. The, the house is three doors down. <laughs> and, um, so I really didn't make it far and I, uh, I stopped. And I got out of the car and I just kind of stood there. So the mailbox was completely out of the ground and the woman <laughs> walked out and she was just like, what happened? And I'm like, wow, I got to tell her. <laughs> like, I have a real guitar. I can't even play guitar. I have to show her this janky guitar with buttons that hit me. And that's why I destroyed her mailbox. Um, and she went inside and was like, let me go talk to my husband. So like I was standing out there probably like 30 minutes in the cold, like, geez, where is this man? Like, what do you think they were talking about? Like, yeah, I don't know. Well, when I went to knock, <laughs> the dog started barking and it, I felt like I had woken her up. I was like, oh, did you just leave? And she's like, oh, you're like, you're Kathy's kid, right? And I was like, yeah. She's like, if there's no marks on your car, just like, just go, don't worry about it. I was like, sweet. So I still just went to the rock band party late. And then about two or three weeks later, and this is probably the most embarrassing part of the story at Applebee's, we, um, <laughs> we were there for a reason. And um, my dad was like, uh, anyone, anyone know what uh, happened on that, you know, front, front light? It's like cracked, dented, whatever. We tried to buff it out, Grant and I, a, a kid in our grade. And um, <laughs> I just was like, no, no. And, and he was just like, ah, oh, someone must have hit me in the in the Metro parking lot. And that was it. And I got off clean for years. And so we were going to tell it as one of my confessions because we didn't have a sketch. So we were just going to throw me under the bus there. Um, you offered. I what we ended up doing instead. But yeah, that, that was that story. Yeah. Who's got some other good ones? Dana Black, you had your hand up like immediately. If it's it's not really, it's just a tradition I'm not sure you're aware of happens. <laughs> Now would be a good time. To um, tell even, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, Dilger, you recall, um, I don't know when or how it started, but we always, I think Ryan was there too, that we had a freshman, because the cheerleaders would practice. Not, um, oh my so, God. Oh, at, no. at, at Central. And you could yeah. like hear them like giggling and like, 
you know, being cheerleaders outside the door. And um, so we had, I know we had Gooby, Aiden, and- Nick, Nick Bruin started and, it, Yeah, right? I think Nick started it. Nick started it? It was Nick yeah. Bruin then, sorry. Because he, was, he had, was under me had, and Matt. He oh, okay, so oh, that. Oh, Nick. <laughs> yeah, there's a gap so in the we years. Because I, I don't know if it was like them, I don't know what they were doing, but they would sit outside of the little theater for some, like, I don't know, because the, the the gym, yeah, the little gym is like over there, and so we would have them go out there, and like we'd have the most awkward and uncomfortable like person that we could find uh, go out there and, and ask one of the cheerleaders out, um, and I know <laughs> Aiden, who's directing this year, she said yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, th this actually isn't a revelation to me because I, I did know this. I did know this okay, somewhat good. ridiculous tradition because I think Aiden told me mm. and was like super excited. <laughs> and like, it was, it was a I, I think I think it was one of these things where it's like, yeah, I went out there because they told me to. And I'm almost positive he told me when he was a freshman. He narked like right away. And then I was like, I was like, <laughs> OK. And you let them do this? Yeah, but it's totally okay because she said yes. I was like, oh. <laughs> hey, little freshman it was, <laughs> got rejected. <laughs> uh, Wait, did Mick get rejected? I thought it was like a maybe and then no, like it, it was initially. I thought it was, it was a maybe because we just wanted that. We wanted the cheerleaders to come to our show and they didn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so my God. You, I love you, you were doing some guerrilla marketing style there, but it, it didn't pay <laughs> off. Wait, Gooby, did you do it? Yeah, I did it. I didn't I get did. a response. Because oh, yeah, I, knew, I knew them. <laughs> well, I, I like I used to knew them and they're like, what the they're like, what the heck is Mike O'Callaghan doing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they just like kind of like smiled and like walked away without saying anything. It didn't die because of uh, any other reason than location. We switched. We don't actually practice out of Central anymore. We practice out of East. So, so what else do they do? Oh, my song? gosh. I I would, the Little Theater is a cathedral. Yeah, what else yeah. do they do? Yeah. I would have quit. No, we did yeah, I mean, the Little Theater's different. Yeah, Casey. that's a good point. A lot of you a lot of you wouldn't even recognize the Little Theater anymore because it was oh totally my God. renovated. Really? Yeah. Wait, yeah. Do, Casey and Kennedy, do you remember when we used to have to rehearse in classrooms and we'd have to like take pictures to remember where the desks were every time? Oh, right? yes. It was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, though, Central holds such a special place in my heart, like for so many reasons. Like, it makes me sad to hear that it's not like, you know, the little theater, like, oh my God, and you guys practicing there and stuff. Dang. I, I still remember <laughs> just the ride over. I think it was usually Tuesdays, maybe. I don't know. I guess. Yes. Yeah. Um, Taking the bus. Still don't we work were... on Tuesday to this day because of One X. Yeah. Well, it was always like whoever <laughs> could get in a car, like obviously like the upper class. And so like we would try to jump in a car with Mitch or Wes. And so we'd be like, yeah. <laughs> we're cool. Cars so that we could like maybe stop at Sizzles beforehand and then. <laughs> And they show up late because we had yeah. to the warm ups. So, at the worst, mad dash to get out of East Campus was always so yeah. chaotic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With a Coca Cola. You're like, sorry. <laughs> yeah. There was Mitch, Mitch Traffic McLaughlin, was awful. McLaughlin and like Weston Deets had like zero remorse. <laughs> They'd show up five minutes late and just be like, yeah, sorry. I'm like, you're not sorry. <laughs> Don't tell me you're sorry. <laughs> Like Once. you would, you would come like, in with, like yeah, you would come in with like full sandwiches. Be like, there was just a line. I'm like, you didn't have to be full <laughs> right now. <laughs> um, Casey, you, in front of me. <laughs> you were asking something about the one X. So one X is still at Central though, right? You so, guys just don't practice there, kind of thing. I'm actually, I'm gonna go like this because this is how the video is. Uh, yeah. Kennedy Musich, Kennedy Musich now directs the one X. <laughs> Well, and sorry, I've been crying for like the last hour. Aww. We've got a first nephew, so we're like so, like we just Facetimed like five minutes ago, so I'm crying. <laughs> so, um, get your priorities but, straight, Kennedy. Yeah. This, oh is, my God. this is where your family is, oh okay? Shower <laughs> cap, my God. <laughs> we're your baby now. <laughs> but no, um, so <laughs> we rehearse at um, East, but the show's still Central. 
It's still okay. by donation. It's still like very chill, very easy, yeah. but um, it's still there. Also, I just got a nephew. So, bye. oh my God, Kennedy. <laughs> Kennedy. Any, I, I still want to hear from our old team here from the Team 10. I, I had one. This. Yeah. So, I, my memory of my life before today is just always fuzzy like I rely on my friends and Facebook to remind me of the things that I did and like the person I was but there is this one memory <laughs> that I know it happened at Central and I was with AJ Biondo who a few of you will know it was and I think Dan Flint and it was after One X you know, we had some sort of rehearsal, maybe the show, but basically everyone had gone and we obviously brought our Ouija board. We were prepared for this opportunity <laughs> to go into the very haunted central auditorium. And eventually like we, you know, the Ouija board, it, AJ Biondo was just pushing it the whole time. You know, it was one <laughs> of those things. You never trust a high school male person to do that. And then eventually, like, we went into the dressing room, which then in the back of the dressing room has a door that is leads to this stairwell that goes all the way down to the cafeteria. And on the way down, there's, like, you guys are all nodding. I was just, like, mind blown. I'm so glad, like, you guys know what I'm talking about. There was some yeah, weird no. stuff there. over there. Okay. Yep. <laughs> it was, like, the most, like, that is one of the best memories I've had in my high school career. Like it was just so exciting, you know, to do that. <laughs> it, unfortunately, yes, Shower Cap had a long history of wandering the Central Hall. Just wandering. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> wandering. Hey. Oh, yeah. Hey. Um, that way. Yeah. Gonna, that having. I was just about to this, say this segway. whole episode can't air. <laughs> do you know that every year? Dr. Gilbert has to come to me and says, will you please keep shower cap in the little theater? And every year I say, every year I say, every year I have to say to her, you know, DLG, I'm trying. I'm trying to keep them in there, but it's like herding cats. I can't. Yeah, I was going to say, you should get us a dog that chases, yeah. like, that hurts us. I An like, SCK dog. I have yeah, to get like a cheap dog. dog. I was gonna say, a dog, like a border SCK collie. dog would be awesome. Yeah. Like, I have to get like a border like a, collie that a, just runs a around retriever. you. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Like the SCK border collie. There you go. <laughs> and, and then and then put a GoPro on it so it can track us. <laughs> yeah. Is it just I see, you, SCK dog. I just see it grabbing one of you by the collar, dragging you back down the hall, and like, good girl, put him back in the theater. <laughs> um, yes. The the tradition of shower cap wandering. So changing time, shower cap these days somewhat stays where they're supposed to. I still catch mm -hmm. them wandering every now and again, but not too bad. When are you saying, like just this year? <laughs> uh, wandering. I'm gonna give you like a 72% C last year for uh, <laughs> passing. So I slam my mic. The wandering is, now that I'm thinking about it, that is super important because that's like the outside bonding moment. And you find so much humor in that adrenaline, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wandering, is yeah. wandering is big oh, for bonding. Yeah. It's definitely I don't know. The Saturday night yeah. of the show, like, oh my just God. being at, like, oh, there is something like, at, like being at Central Campus at night, the night mm -hmm. of the show. It just, I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm getting fired up thinking about Dude. it right now. I don't know what it is. Like, I'm like, I, I would do anything to be in the little theater right now. Like, just yeah. like having everybody together being just like, all right, we're about to go on stage and well, just do 20 minutes of Central, whatever happens, happens. The thing about Central, it's over 100 years. So it's like freaking Hogwarts. And like, before yeah. the show, no matter like what your team was, if it was like the perfect like good team or if it was like questionable, no matter <laughs> what, you always ended up exploring. And that reminds me of um, when Mitch and I were directors. I don't know what it was, but there were like two instances, like 15 minutes before the show, we were like, you guys want to explore? And we're like, why not? We have all this adrenaline. And I mean, I don't know who it could have been, but like I just remember Dean saying, 
Yeah, the janitor saw this kid with red hair running out of like the basement part of <laughs> Central. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who could that have been? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. And now it's usually a tag team between Musa and I of like, I will watch. I know you have 40 one actors, but I've got 14 shower caps. That's fair. Like, that's a good balance. You you can get the three casts to sit in chairs. I will try to keep these 14 in a room. Um, Yes, that's I will say this. Shower cap does the, the bonding, the adrenaline, all that stuff like. I just I think that's just part of like sometimes like comedy teams like you get kind of like a a ride or die kind of moment right before a, a show because you know Matt Ryan SCK Matt, like, is ride or die yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it is like you, if if your show is gonna sink or swim it's in that twenty minutes you, you don't have there's no twenty minutes after it. it it's you get this and you know the difference between the scripted is you know the scripted they work so long it's something they feel confident with what they're going out there shark caps like we have a general idea of these sketches that we know but then there's these like two to three improv <laughs> games that can go south quick and can sort of tank your show if it shows up at the wrong part you know if you pull the number and it's the first thing you do it sets the tone for the show so um it's a shame the team this year really hasn't had a chance to do a lot of improv but we have some we have some quick people this year. We have some really uh, some younger people who are going to be great long term shower caps. I think that are just really quick witted. Um, but yes, in the joke of shower cap is ride or die, I happen to know a true tale from SK <laughs> from talking about the adrenaline that kicks in before a show. I'm almost positive, Director Vlack, this was the night of our adjudication, <laughs> the night we had judges in the house to watch our sketch show that we had slung together as four of them nod like they're super proud of this. We won. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we won. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what it is with our team that year. I mean, it was a great team. We were, we were like well-polished, all experienced. You know, sometimes it would just be days at rehearsal where we're like, whatever, let's just wing it. Other days we were super focused. Um, and like you said, we had that adjudication show going on. And I happen to have some memorabilia, a original first draft of the script for the show. That's he pretty awesome. So that... But anyway, saw... Brandon. <laughs> sure now, so, was... you, uh, so you are our pre-show. You ask me, can the team leave campus? Which, for the record, I don't allow it anymore. So congratulations. Um, can the team leave the campus to go get McDonald's for dinner and come back? And I, like an idiot, said, sure. Go. Okay. Yes. And so, I mean, in our defense, we're all hungry. This is a really big deal. We're in high school. We eat like crap. So we had to fuel up on McDonald's and some caffeine. Uh, you know, if it was 2020, we would have just hit up Grubhub. But, you know, this is back in the day. So, um, we all piled up like sardines into Weston Deeds' car. And so, uh, you, you know, we get to McDonald's, and I'm going to have to have the others chime in in a second because, you know, I'm an old man, so my memory kind of, you know, it's a little faded. <laughs> but we get to McDonald's, we order, and, um, of course, what do you know, there's another group of high schools, like some young adult movie, whenever two groups of high schoolers get together, like, chaos is just bound to happen. I don't know what it is. You got this adrenaline. Your mind's still developing. You see kids your age. You're like, let's go. Who's, who's like, the best group of kids here? <laughs> and uh, so, Mitch, Matt, would one of you like to, uh, <laughs> Ryan, explain what went down? Because it happened so fast. How much can we say? So we had been given these uh, certain cards that we had all hung on to because oh, wait, we wait, cherish wait. them. You can tell that story. I didn't give you those cards. That was issued by the school. You are welcome to tell those stories. So uh, we had received some ATM cards, also known as abstinence till marriage cards, that we all kept with us. And while we were at McDonald's, a uh, commercial that could pr uh, probably be related to that came on. And we started 
harassing another group of people at the McDonald's about okay, the commercial okay. I, and I the know, ATM card. Really, I don't know. If, I don't know. If, I maybe we weren't harassing them. them. No, we, we were harassing, harassing them. Come on. I think hey, maybe, hey, all right, wait. we were having a good time. We're, 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 we're an improv team. We are an improv team. We're cracking a few jokes. They just couldn't handle it. <laughs> That's her ass. <laughs> exactly. We were we were too good for them. <laughs> um, Carry on. Anyways, one thing leads to another, and we start talking in the McDonald's. The groups come together, and all I remember from this point, this is probably what like seven years ago. That's such a blur. Um, all I remember is us being outside. I'm in the passenger seat of Weston's car. Okay. Wait, and wait, wait, he wait, is wait, yelling wait, wait, wait. at. Oh wait, yeah, please wait, break it. <laughs> right before that, right before that, I recall like we were all outside, huddled in a circle, like a dozen of high schoolers, and it turned into this like roast fest, like back and forth. We were like dissing each other, you know. And then we we're like, okay, we gotta, we got this show coming up. We just ate. We're like hyped up on caffeine. We're like, we gotta get out of here. So then we run to Weston's car. We all hop in, and then Matt take it over. I also, really quick before this, I do remember Antonio Rivera trying to calm the situation down by oh, talking God. about his tale of Zulu, the lobster crustacean god. <laughs> like, that was, <laughs> that was his, like, we were all just, like, going back and forth with these kids, and then Antonio's in the corner be like, but do you guys know about Zulu? Like, <laughs> just totally trying to, like, bring the situation down, which only made it funnier. Anyways, fast forward, we're all like, we got to get out of here. Like, we have a show. We're performing for judges. Like, this is a big deal. <laughs> and we get into Weston's car. And as Weston is backing out, one of the kids, like, I'm, he jumped on the hood of the car. And Weston was like, I'm not stopping. <laughs> like, and he drove a few feet with this kid on the hood of his car before he got off. <laughs> and then he went to Central or East. And then, next thing you know, the show got accepted in the theater fest. So, <laughs> so next thing you know, we we got to East Campus and we were so fired up. We were like, we cannot tell Dean about this. But we are we are ready to go. Like we need we let's perform. Like that was like that was like I don't know. Maybe that was like our biggest bonding moment. Like that that was. <laughs> Is when it became truly ride or die because that was the situation. <laughs> literally, <laughs> it was so, literally ride or die the, at the Lockport McDonald's. I gotta say, I feel like sometime after that, Gil started just ordering like Jimmy John's for GI. She's like, "What well, does have them bring the food to us?" Yeah, there yes. was a switch. Wasn't there? I believe this story. <laughs> so this story did get out. Now, granted, like I said, we didn't get all the details. Kennedy, you have you have a look of of somewhat you know, horrified on your face or you're still thinking about your new nephew, but I want to laugh and be like, yeah, you I, know I got to FaceTime a baby like an hour, ago, like not even an hour ago. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, it's our first one. I don't remember if this was when Dane and I were directing or the year just before, because it kind of just blends together because that new oh, redesigned little theater kind of just throws me off. With yeah. time. It's like a white void, but for those of you who don't know the oh, little theater, the listening school. to us, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the little, little theater is exactly how it sounds. It's literally a classroom that's a slightly bigger, that's shaped like a theater and has a stage. So just beyond it, there's like an old piano that's completely out of tune and busted. Oh, then once we, we like, got the rolly chairs. <laughs> yeah, the rolly chairs were pretty fun. Cause the rolly the chairs were great. The yeah. rolly yeah. chairs were a, a nice train. <laughs> Oh, Dylan, Dude, I you feel play like... heart and soul every rehearsal poorly on that piano until I told you to shut up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> every time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Only song I know. But. <laughs> My God. Uh, one tradition we did start and I think ended with Michael was uh, when Michael was a freshman, you guys remember that one case that was just outside the <gasps> little that had yeah. the column that said citizen on it? We shoved, we opened that case and forced Michael to get in there. We didn't force him. We asked him and he consented. You're, you're making it sound so illegal. 
Well, I mean, he was a freshman. We kind of peer pressured him into it, but I thought it was funny, and I think he enjoyed it too. Dean, have I ever sent you the four consecutive years of Goobies? Because I took the same exact picture in the same exact location all four years in a row. No, but that would be hilarious, and I want to see it. It's a very weird progression. You see my soul, like, drain by the end. <laughs> you, can, uh, you, you can tell when you, like, started eating something more than McChickens because you fill in a little the, bit. Yeah. That's oh, good. No, man. but I'll send you that, dude. Yeah. I would love to see those things. Um, unless anybody's got an amazing tale to wrap us up, this has been just utter chaos. I would say <laughs> well, I have one more. I will let Matt. Gr- oh, I will God. let one uh, this, this one isn't as extravagant, but it, I feel like it's just a very SCK story. Uh, this is back when during me and Ryan's freshman year, when uh, Luke Jago had was a very hairy guy. <laughs> oh God, I know where <laughs> this is going. <laughs> one day he showed up to practice and just lifts his shirt up. And he had shaved his body hair into an arrow. <laughs> that is like literally like Avatar him. the Last Airbender. Yeah. <laughs> it all perfect. circles back. It was <laughs> going, yeah, it's a full circle. And that is how we got the shirt name Harry. <laughs> He's just like, oh hey guys, like, hey. And we're like, wow. That's so funny. And, oh man. He's like a comedian who loves oh, Luke Jago. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like Dean, do they know about Sam? Sam who? Uh, she is an intern with the library, but oh, she's from the oh, original oh. Shower Cap. You Sam tell them. Yeah. Yeah, she, so she, she works at Lockport now. So, yeah. So, it's it's funny you talk about these, like, long-term Shower Cap stories. They're long-term Shower Cap stories from when I started directing. I started directing in 2010, but the whole team was started by Dr. Gilbert. Laura Gilbert mm-hmm. started this thing in, in I want to say, 2000. I think we've been doing, I think Shower Cap has been a thing for almost 20 years now. Yeah, and, honestly, the reason that I did it was because my sister did it, you know, four I years did before me. Yeah, see, it's a, it's a family business. What did I say? Yeah. Well, then, Ross, you might be able to help me out, too, because, oh, sorry, I saw the chat. Too many cooks. Um, so, <laughs> Ross, you, uh, yeah, you might have to help me out, too. My goal is, for anyone who hears it, I would like to get the original Shower Cap team back together. I would like to try yeah. to find Whoa. the 2000 team and let dr gilbert run the show and i'll play producer again but um because she started this team so uh it would definitely be it would definitely be fun to have all them on and let her reminisce a bit on on the creation absolutely that's hopefully going to be one coming up soon um i'll throw it out one last time and see if anybody else has got a grand shower cap story no that's why i was going to say i didn't have any stories because no shenanigans went on when I was on watch. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's, what I mean? That's exactly right. Right. Yeah. No shenanigans. No shenanigans went on. <laughs> yeah. Megan, you had Michael on your team. I not only know did shenanigans happen, I, I worry for and the safety. Danny. I worry for the safety of everybody yeah. involved. Yeah. You guys together. So I, I am going to take my own advice and I'm going to wrap it up because I know these 10 will want to end up staying on and talking late into the night. So Um, I'm just going to say thank you for checking this out. I hope you found it entertaining, whatever I cut together, because I don't know what I'm going to cut together out of what I think is almost at this point two and a half hours of catching up with ten of my favorite people in the world. Um, Geek out with the geek out. I love that. For those who are not watching on YouTube, Brandon Black has the best notebook ever. Um, I wanted to throw it to this real quick. Yeah. Um, I want to run through from oldest to youngest I want to just ask if there's anything you want to plug, if there's a show you're want you're a fan of or a group you're doing you're working with or anything like that. If you put out music, if you're in a play, if you've got a stand up bit online that you want some YouTube views on, um, I want to give anybody a chance to plug anything. So I'll start with Kennedy Music. Um, granted, you and I work for the same organization, so I wonder if the plugs are going to be the I'm same. I'm the oldest. Uh, you're you're oh, on the. Oh, let me plug. Check out our one X show, right? That's gonna we're gonna debut yeah. that in January. Oh. Um, yeah, it's a radio yeah. radio show. It's gonna be good. Yeah, Kennedy and I are working on all radio plays for the one X this year. Shower Cap Kids will be featured as commercial breaks. I uh, they have written for nineteen forties esque 
uh, it's really cool. breaks and yeah. I've read them and they cool. are very funny. So, yeah. um, yeah, check that out. That should be dropping January, or January January 21st, something like that. Yeah. I think that's what Last we're aiming week of January. for. Yeah. That's what we're aiming for. It's going to be uh, completely online. You can get all the links from Lockport's website. Casey Ross, anything fun to plug? I really hope my current employer doesn't hear this, but I am looking for a job <laughs> and I'm like ready to go. So I don't know. Shameless plug for myself. Like I'm a great person to work with. I'm like, what is it? Good people to work with, <laughs> with great, great people to do business with. I don't know what it was. <laughs> Nice people to do business with. Nice people to do business with. I am a nice person to do business with. Oh, wait, you know what? I do have an important plug that everyone should see. It is my cat. Aww. He is a croissant. (laughs) Brandon Vlack, do you have anything you wish to plug? Uh, Well, I sure do, Dean. Let me tell you. (laughs) My guy, is is that the Meyer shopping guy? (laughs) Yeah, you better believe it. <laughs> Any podcasts out there need a voice? Let me help you out. <laughs> but actually, I do. So as you know, I just graduated as uh, an English and secondary education major. So I'm looking for a job currently. If you're not on YouTube, you best hop on over to that timestamp right now because oh yeah, baby, I got a QR code. Get it! Get it! That links to my LinkedIn. It might be backwards, but if you scan this, you'll go right to my LinkedIn. Next up is No Limit Left. That's my improv team in Orland Park, Illinois. If you scan this QR code, it will take you to an article that tells you about the wonderful team. I swear, the last thing, threes are good. It's always good to go in three. Is um, the band of my girlfriend and very close friends. Their name is Lofrendo. They make and produce music on their farm. Most frequently, they're um, compared to the Pixies. So check out Lofrendo. You scan this, we'll take you right to Spotify. But they're also on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you name it. All right, enough of that plug. But uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I hope to get some engagement there. I love you all. Uh, you can also email me at brandonblack at gmail.com. <laughs> wow wow i have to say right now um casey ross just going for i'm a nice person hire me and just... i plugged my cat <laughs> <laughs> for those who couldn't see it you you owe it to yourself to jump over to our youtube channel and check that out um mitch mclaughlin do you have anything to plug okay so i do make my own music and i put an album out a few years ago but i didn't like it i thought it was trash and so i took it off online and which is totally cool because like i don't know it's just the way i want it that's the way i want my music to be heard it's like so like the first record on spotify is like a banger because like think about it like kanye's first record is the college dropout i it's mean an album so i'm in it for the long haul so i don't have any of my music to plug but I'm producing a trap artist from New Orleans. And uh, so Into I'll it? be going down there to record all the vocals. I made all the beats and everything. And it's like, it's like Gucci Mane. And like, I mean, I love like Kid Cudi and Kanye. So yeah. it's got some of that in there. But What's the name? Yeah. Sav M. So say, say it again. I think, you got, I think you got cut off. Say it again. Sav M. B. It's S A V M B E E. Sav M B. S A V M B E E. All right, that's Mitch McLaughlin. Uh Ryan O'Callahan, what do you uh what do you got to plug, my good friend? God, I mean, that's tough. I just followed up like the two people who have legit things um to plug. I have honestly, I think I'm going the Casey route. I mean, I need a job, a long-term job. I mean, there's not really anywhere, you know, filming on sets and stuff right now, kind of hard to find stuff that's doing that. So I think I'm just holding out for that mainly. Um, yeah, I don't know if I ever shoot something, I'm, I'm probably gonna buy a camera soon. Go watch, I don't know, I'll post a movie or something. Yeah. Matt Gray, anything you want to throw out there, man? Uh, I got nothing to plug. I do have a PSA uh, that is please continue to wear a mask and don't be rude to grocery store employees. Amen. Uh, as dealing with this for the past nine months has been awful. So yeah, just wear your mask. Be nice to everybody. 
and uh, hopefully we can all do comedy in person again. Patrick Dilger, anything you got to blood? So uh, at my tech school, my program is architecture. So we're really a design degree uh, program. So we're like the weird art kids who get a glorified arts and craft degree. So what we do is uh, there's like uh, an AIAS, like it's just arch- like an architecture student association thing. There's like a little art program called Cumulus Zine. It's like our zine. Oh, uh, cool. So it's just a collection of a bunch of art from like our college students. And I think a lot of it is really good. So it's Cumulus Zine is an Instagram handle. There's no spaces or anything. C-U-M-U-L-U-S z-i-n-e nice it'll be the first thing that pops up i i was really surprised that that was the first thing like they got that handle right away because there's a lot of different zines and cumuluses out there but it's a lot of artwork all original from like my peers at school and some of my work i don't know if it's still on there or not because they rotate stuff out but yeah it's a lot of cool work dana black Anything you want to plug? Aha, she held up a charger. What a, um, no, what a if, clever, if anyone, punny, punny person. <laughs> never ends. Um, if anyone wants to come to Chili's and Homer Glen um, and tip me my entire college tuition cost, I have green hair and a bad attitude. You can't miss me. <laughs> uh, Megan Staley, do you have anything you want to plug? Uh. Mm, not really. I mean, humor artists, we stream our shows live when we have them every month. Um, there's a show up on YouTube now that I was in. Um, but yeah, if you're ever bored, we'll stream them. How can we find the humor artists? We're at the humor artists on Instagram and that's it. Just the humor artists. Nice. And I assume all necessary links in the bio. Yes. Fantastic. Michael O'Callaghan, I'm sure it's very similar, but do you have anything else you want to plug? Uh, yeah, the humor artists. Um, I'll plug um, a friend's podcast called My Town. My um, Town. My Town. Listen to My Town podcast. Available on all podcast uh, platforms. And then also, I'm I'm maybe starting. I was texted last night about starting a sketch radio show. So eventually, oh, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> That's, cool. That's now a plan, but yeah. All right. And how do we find my town? Is it just M Y T O W N? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. All right. My town, wherever podcasts are heard. Um, and that's the same for us. You can find the shower cap kids, wherever podcasts are heard. Uh, hopefully you're listening to it right now, or if you're watching us on YouTube, thank you for coming here too. Uh, you can always like, and subscribe to the Porter players, YouTube. If you need to figure out where we are, it's P O R T E R S players, uh, throw us in the search bar on YouTube and you can find all of our material that we put out. Thank you so much for watching rinse and repeat. Uh, we appreciate it. And we do this show. Like I check my LTHS email once a week. See you later. (laughs) Bye bye. All right. That's 30 seconds. (laughs) That felt right. That one felt right. No, but we legit got our first nephew during the show. (laughs)